welcome everybody to our uh, actually joint presentation of a cooperation between uh, our project at Humboldt University and Enterprise. And we cooperate in developing a new tool for to support user participation and the creation of structured data. Uh, I will say uh, some words about the project and the requirements and how they are involved. And Daniel Hensch will, Hensch will say something about the implementation of technical stuff. Um, my name is Carsten Walkman. I'm, uh, I'm an historian, and, but I'm also involved in developing information systems and publication platforms uh, for the arts and humanities, and particularly for the historical discipline. The project I'm talking about is called Dokopedia Zeitgeschichte, which means Dokopedia Contemporary History. Uh, well, contemporary history is the area uh, most people say after the uh, Second World War. And um, the project is um, carried out by three uh, major organizations uh, the Humboldt University Center for Contemporary History in Potsdam. Um, the, and it's funded by the German Research Foundation since 2008. And uh, it's the organizations participating in the project will uh, continue to fund it, probably on a minor scale, but uh, hopefully the editorial team uh, and the editorial work will be funded in the next years too. Um, the platform uh, is Semantic Media Wiki. Um, and we started with Semantic Media Wiki because we had some requirements for content management. We didn't have any data model uh, in mind. And so we worked with Semantic Media Wiki from the beginning. And we also used some other extensions. We tested other extensions, especially important for historians is the footnote extension side. Uh, we work with uh, the wiki, we get editor and other extensions to uh, to import work processed documents into the wiki and uh, we applied extensions lockdown and uh, access, access control uh, to restrain uh, access to some areas of the wiki and uh, to implement some simple workflows. And we use the extension is feed, is the feed import to invest in this dynamic RSS feed resources. And I will talk about this later on. Um, the main goal of the project is to publish uh, introduction articles to contemporary history, uh, but mainly uh, not articles about the facts, what happened after 1945. Uh, but more concepts and historiographic, historiographical approaches from scholars that are working in, the, in this field. So there's <coughs> some overview articles uh, that try to give a synthesis of research problems connected, for example, to global history. And so this is very much concerned uh, the with, with concepts and terms and discussions in contemporary history. And another goal of the project was to re relay these concepts and these articles to materials and resources from the net that may be useful if you start to work with, with, within these research areas. Uh, so we have the, the article on the left, and we have a long list uh, with materials, the classical um, um, literature, and we also have websites and many materials from digital collections. Uh, that were uh, compiled uh, in other portals and services. Um, the workflow, how we publish all this, is quite conventional. So we differ very much from, from Wikipedia, where a big community uh, of people are working on, on the articles. Now we, we ask authors to send in articles, these are peer reviewed, and uh, Mostly the editorial team is working with this publication platform. Okay, the 
main requirement uh, to um, think about a better uh, way to integrate these information, external information uh, feeds into the wiki came from our attempt to integrate a high volume uh, information portal uh, for histori historiography that publishes about uh, 10 or 15 uh, news articles, revenues, conference reports every day. And uh, these uh, articles need to be need to be analyzed um, if they fit to the topic and, and subject of the article that's published. So we have a stream of information that goes through RSS into the wiki and then is searched um, through um, by keywords. Um, we have several feeds from digital collections that are analyzed by keywords and key terms and then uh, displayed as materials at article with topic one, two, three. And this resulted in uh, a big effort for the editorial team because uh, if you have automatic selection by search terms and keywords in the content of uh, various databases, you get about 15, 20% of positives and this is uh, destroying the entire overall uh, impression that the, the digital publication should make because usually you have articles and you have an um, environment of materials in a, uh, in a published form where they are very selected and uh, evaluated by scholars and this automatic evaluation didn't work. So we defined some requirements for these extensions. Uh, first one was um, that we needed a tool that would aggregate all these different information feeds where users could also add new feeds and um, these feeds should be aggregated into a list of suggested resources, resources for the particular topic of the article. And this list should be displayed beside the article on the top of this material area. So these are not the selected materials, just the <coughs> suggestion which materials should fit or are appropriate for the article. Another requirement should, uh, was that not the editors or the editorial team should select which uh, resources should stay with the article, but users should do this by tagging these resources. Resources should be related to the article, but they should also uh, um, get texts uh, that were individually created by, by users, and these texts should be the label or the basis for um, collections by users, and these collections should be syndicated or distributed from the wiki as page feeds from the users or as collection feeds. You can see collection feeds in the mock -up. Okay, these were the, the major general requirements. Um, we had some general technical requirements that should fit into our environment and work with our scaling, which we are uh, still developing. Uh, should be open source and there should be some documentation provided. And uh, uh, Daniel will be able to uh, yeah, take into the documentation. Thank you, Carson, for, for this. I'm particularly happy that you um, agreed to join in here and have this talk with me and to, to present your fabulous portal which you have out there to, to the community. And as we, as we know from, I was it in Washington with our friends from uh, Internet or O Internet, they were called. Um, I believe that such examples of how to use um, our technology um, uh, is, is a huge benefit for the community to see how this really serves something and is not, so to say, only uh, stuff for nerds. So this is why I'm quite, quite happy about that. Um, also, 
Secondly, I'm, I'm happy that um, you're contracting us here for for doing the heavy lifting of uh, for fulfilling your requirements here. So let me briefly explain to you what we have in mind, uh, which we will um, deliver first to, to you as a customer and then to um, the community. And what we, what we have in mind is that um, we will um, implement a solution which um, continuously imports um, feeds, so they are pulled regularly, periodically, and um, they are tagged automatically. And once these feed elements are stored in a wiki, so we are actually importing them, um, they can be tagged with further annotations and then they can be queried and aggregated into, into new um, feeds, which can be um, published. So this is basically what we have in mind. So we need a user interface for, for um, uh, setting that up, the, the, uh, to, to tell the machine what feeds are out there, what, what are interesting, and how to, how to uh, get them, what are the URLs. Um, also to tell the machine how to, to um, tag them and how to display them and um, to make sure that, um, for example, uh, the main page um, uh, gives an ever-updated list of incoming feeds. For example, if we set up a, a period of, I don't know, one second or so, then we should get a nice um, scrolling list of incoming uh, feeds on, on the main page, for example, on, on a wiki using that solution. So, um, again, here we are we, we want to publish that as a wiki application, which comes with um, an extension, and which you can download then from our, our repository. And that, that should be then um, ready to use with templates and forms and examples, etc. Good, so how does um, the intended workflow would um, look like. So we start with telling the machine what to import, how to find that, and what to do with it. And this is done with the first, first step, the prepare feed import. Here we, the user defines a template for um, feed items. So for each um, RSS feed, which we want to tap in, we define a template, it's a regular template which says, Okay, feed items from uh, this RSS feed shall be layouted like this and shall be tagged like that. And uh, please tag these and that um, uh, metadata or annotations with it. Um, so this is the intended uh, user interface of how um, uh, the user will tell uh, the wiki of what RSS feeds um, uh, shall be imported and how to import it. So this user interface here is part of an extension which we already have, which we are, we are enhancing with that functionality. This is the data import extension. And everybody who is thinking of reusing um, uh, data, uh, which is sitting outside somewhere, for example, in CSV files or, or um, in web services, Everybody who is intending to use that uh, piece of this data in a wiki uh, should um, use the data import extension. So this is quite a flexible uh, framework. Michael can tell heaps of stuff about that, how nice it is. And um, we simply enhance it with uh, a new module which takes care of uh, importing RSS. So the user would select um, a, a, a newsfeed, and then enter some parameters, and in the next step, um, the particular feed is uh, read tentatively, just to, to, to list um, a couple of, of uh, data to verify that I've selected the proper um, RSS feed. And also, it gives me a, here a list of metadata um, which should be extracted from it. And I can click it on and off. Also, what's interesting for you 
properly um, the so-called update policy. So this is the, the, the frequency on um, uh, how long the periods are once the, um, uh, the RHS feeds are pulled. So you can go here down to one minute. This means um, the RSS feed will be asked for new items um, on each minute. Right, so once we have um, uh, uh, specified these parameters, um, the feed elements from, um, from this particular feed will be imported as they come in and materialized as um, wiki articles in the wiki. So this goes automatically and um, uh, you have then nice articles in, in the wiki which you can um, query them. So this is a background job and of course you can always go then back into this user interface um, uh, to change the parameters and to start and stop reading particular RSS feeds. Now, how to display uh, these imported feeds? So we are thinking about implementing um, or enhancing an existing um, parser function which we uh, already have. This is an asynchronous um, of, uh, ask. So um, uh, this basically will periodically um, update an, an inline query which is sitting in an article. So, um, or you know what this means. So each 60 seconds or so, um, this inline query will be um, executed again, and um, uh, the updated uh, result will be, will be displayed. So this is how to import it. Oh, what else over there in the filter statements? Um, we can get an idea of the intended um, meta model for um, uh, for which um, uh, holds the, uh, the imported data and information about the RSS feeds and, and the individual items and how they are tagged. So, for example, this. Uh, inline query here would um, display uh, feed items which have been tagged by the user as um, of uh, history related. Now this is the display part and also as a, another requirement is um, how to aggregate existing feed items with new items. Well that's quite easy. We would use an um, existing uh, format printer to do that. Right, how would this look like? Um, so here you would have um, uh, the list of um, uh, incoming feed items and um, here is a list of, um, of my aggregated items. Well. Good. So, how can you expect us? No, when can you expect that to be available? Um, we will publish um, the first part of that work in, in October to the uh, uh, to the public, to the community. Our customer will get it um, earlier, of course. Uh, so, what you will have then with uh, the next version of Halo extension is this Ajax S which we hope uh, will be um, useful for, for you too. And then in December, you will get um, a new version of the data import extension, which has a particular module for, the, for reading RSS feeds and annotating them. And also what we get is um, ten, uh, a wiki application, which bundles it all with um, nice uh, example articles and a uh, general um, a meta model for RSS feeds and feed items, etc. Right. So, in before the turn of the year, you will um, uh, get that. Okay. Good. So, any questions so far? Is, uh, is 
that the Ajax ask things is a uh, meant to query um, 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 no uh, well uh, well what's the what's the advantage of that as opposed to a, an RSS a standard RSS reader that uh, that refreshes itself does it can it query more kinds of uh, data you can filter for particular data because the uh, um, the feed items are tagged in the wiki, so you can uh, filter for these tags. And also, I'm not aware if there are RSS readers which run in, in the wiki page, are there? Uh, yes, there okay. is. All right, but um, um, they, I don't believe that they allow you to filter for such things. Actually, the other function here is very generic. It's not, actually, it's not the all the basis of the RSS feature at all. It can run any ask query do it asynchronously that if the query uh, the computation takes a lot of time, the wiki page will be up, you will see the circling uh, icon say, okay, I'm still building, finding the result table for you. It will take a minute or two or six minutes. Right. Uh, yeah, I think I was thinking about that. You, what you could do is run a normal query and have that display RSS and then have a, uh, uh, an RSS reader do that. You might consider that more of a hack though. Than This project is also about sharing feeds and uh, bookmarking, shared, shared bookmarking, if you want. There's some, one guy who annotates one feed and says, okay, this is relevant for this topic, and on this topic page, everyone can see this feed, and not the other ones which might have been potentially interesting as well. So it combines by like, uh, annotation and site page. Proxy by what happened 
and then, yeah, and then uh, you know the the update will be reflected by the per minute. Uh, you know, I, I don't think uh, I think special page calls don't get cached in that way. Which is crazy. Uh, I'm not sure what the default configuration is, but I think at least the file cache won't cache special pages. And so if you go to any API, which is also the API is not cached in that way. So you, I think you bypass these caches. That's probably not, 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 not this quick cache. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the yeah. right. I think it's a good comment, Mark. Just think yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I find that actually very good. It's a good thing to have. And I would like to have, uh, if that would be modular enough to use it in other contexts, I would also love to have this type of thing for example for the Spark attack. Because if you have a, a separate Spark store, which is not the main database, and it, it maybe it has a separate server, there's really no reason to wait with the page display until you have all the queries of the sequence. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of in practice, there's no performance problem is good. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? OK, so then um, I'll come again in December. And you'll have in the repository, you'll have that um, new wiki application. Okay. So.